you can't reasonably call more ice time for the kids if the kids aren't earning it. Good morning to you. Good Wednesday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Penguins. It comes your way bright and early every weekday. If you're into football and or baseball, I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Pirates in the same place that you found this. The Penguins and Red Wings will go head-to-head tomorrow night at PPG Paints Arena. It's becoming a real blur as to who you even want to see win or lose these games, other than, obviously, from the Pittsburgh perspective, that you'd want to see the Penguins just win out. Now, even if they do that, they're not guaranteed of a spot. The Capitals beat the Red Wings last night and leapfrogged the Penguins. The Islanders beat the Rangers and pulled two more points away. So, you know, everything's got to go right. And it's got to go really right. And you can't afford to carry passengers. As such, in covering that game in Toronto a couple nights ago, and, ugh, man, here's that subject again, but watching Jeff Carter and Riley Smith just, just stink it up every shift, doing some kind of damage every shift. You can't help but think to yourself, really, do you really have to see 20 plus times where Carter goes over the boards? Because that's what he's averaged over the past five games. Done nothing. No points, no takeaways, two blocked shots in that time. The worst possession metrics on the team. Faceoffs have still been decent, but you know... How long can you stay in the league on face-offs alone? Smith, I'm not going to be able to keep it clean. I I just cannot conceive of this player being put out there again and again and again with seemingly nobody at any level of this organization taking umbrage with it and the lack of effort, the glaring, embarrassing lack of effort. Three such examples from the game in Toronto, contributed to both of the Maple Leafs' power plays, led directly into them, and nothing, nothing happens. No accountability. Doesn't get benched. Carter, my goodness, there's nothing he could do to get benched. So I I do the normal thing in this setting, and I did this in the press box at Scotiabank Arena, and I start looking at, you know, how are the kids doing? Meaning the kids that are already here. Are they getting enough ice time? Well, the answer to that, for the most part, is no. It's hard to lump all of these guys into the kids' pile because, you know, Jesse Puglia Yarvey's got time in the NHL. Emil Bemstrom is not a kid, really. He's younger, but he's not somebody you would think of as like a rookie or whatever. And Valtteri Pustinen still is getting some ice time though not where you'd want him to. He needs to be a top six guy. He needs to be a power play guy. He's getting none of that right now. But you know what? In the time that any of these guys, these three that I just mentioned, have been on the rink, they have not gotten it done. They have not gotten it done defensively at all, and they haven't really generated much in the attacking zone either. I thought Pugliarvi had a couple of good shifts in Toronto, and then he just didn't get another chance because they don't trust him in his own end. And I thought Pustinen, he had a couple times where he skated and looked a little bit more visible, but he just, he gives the puck up too easily. And by that, I don't mean to the other team. I mean to his teammates. There's... He's been way more effective when he's been more selfish, but he doesn't have that streak in him. And as such, if you're Mike Sullivan, even if you woke up one morning and looked in the mirror and said, whoa, I've been playing Jeff Carter all this time. What is wrong with me? He's still not going to have somebody to put in his place. He's just not. And I think that's going to hurt this team over this last little stretch. I think it already hurt them in Toronto. But what's more, 
man, think about what it means toward the longer term future and the amount of work that still has to be done by Sullivan, by Kyle Dubas, by the players themselves, particularly the younger ones. Now, I'd be remiss if bringing all this up and not mentioning that part of the reason, I think a big part of the reason for this ongoing 6-0-3 point streak is this third pairing of Jack St. Ivany and Ryan Shea. Uh, Shea wasn't at his best the other night in Toronto, but St. Ivany, man, he just doesn't miss a beat. He reminds me, and I say this in the best way possible, of that rookie version that we saw of John Marino, who looked like he'd just be a stud here for years and years to come. Turns out he's still going to be a pretty good NHL player. It's just going to be in Newark because Ron Hextall can't have... Wait a second. Hextall was the guy who got St. Ivan. You see, I can't really pin anything on anybody today. Look, more youth, more energy, more fire is needed. That goes into the future, but it also goes into tomorrow night. When we come back, J1Q... Today's J1Q comes from Paul, who says, PK, wait a second. Did you say on the Tuesday show they'll make it? Was that a gasp prediction? Uh, I knew I was going to hear about that, and I did. And I'm not here to apologize for it because I'm not going to classify it as a prediction. You know how I can get away with that? Because I said it. I mean, I can portray it any way I want, right? I was there when it was spoken. And what I mean when I say that the Penguins will make the playoffs, and remember that it came with a qualifier if they continue playing as they did in Toronto, is that I believe in that. I believe in what I heard from them. The other night in that locker room up there, I believe in what I've seen from them on the ice, what I've heard from them off the ice. I believe that this is a group that very, very, very much now wants to get in. Where was that around the time of the Jake Gensel trade? People even forgot that the playoffs existed and everything. Look, we'll have time for some kind of retrospective or postmortem Maybe in the near future, maybe in the more distant future. But for right now, I have to admire what I'm seeing. For me, it feels like it should be a point of pride for these Penguins that they've climbed back the way they have, that they've surged, really, back into this race the way they have. The Penguins, as a franchise need to be regulars in the playoffs, okay? I think that's part of the identity that they've established over a very, very long period of time. I think it's uh, bizarre and uncomfortable even to have a playoff without Sidney Crosby, let alone Evgeny Malkin, Chris Letang, Eric Carlson. And I believe that there's more good to come of this than there would be in sliding up a couple of picks in the draft by having lost out and by having really just continued that very long collapse and carrying that into the summer. I think there's a lot of pluses to be gained. As long as I'm talking about young players here, by the way, Drew O'Connor has embraced this stage As much as any player on the roster, arguably more, he's not just in playoff mode. Every shift right now, he's in game seven mode. You go back over that goal that he scored to tie the Maple Leafs. You can see that he's the first one in on the four check after he's the one that pushed the puck in from the neutral zone. And then he goes to the net so hard that he ends up somehow behind Ilya Samsonov to clean up the trash when the puck squirts through. He's out of his mind right now. And yet, 
if you look at what he's been doing for a few weeks right now, it's just the norm. Do you get that if you're not in a playoff push? Do you get that advancement? Do you get that awareness on DOC's own part of what it takes to compete at that level? What it might take for him to elevate his own level to become a top six winger on a full-time basis. There's just so much good that comes from it, up to and including exposing the bad. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Penguins, and we're going to do another one of these tomorrow. Tomorrow.